So today is World Ocean Day, and what a great day to do a sea otter watercolor tutorial. So aside from being super cute and fluffy, sea otters, particularly the southern sea otter, play a really important role in California's kelp forests. Sea otters are considered a keystone species, meaning they're directly related to healthy ocean habitats. Because they eat sea urchins and crabs all day, they help maintain the balance of nearshore ecosystems and help kelp and eelgrass habitats flourish. But these cute marine mammals are endangered and they need our help. So today, I hope you join me in painting this cute mom and pup to remind you why sea otters are so important to the ocean. So let's get started. First, let's go over some of the materials you'll need. You'll need watercolor paper, any will do. I use Strathmore cold press paper in this tutorial. You'll need a few different paint brushes, a larger flat brush for the background, a round brush, I used a size eight, and a detailed brush for the very end. You'll need some watercolors. The colors that I used were indigo, Payne's gray, ultramarine blue, terra verde, which is a light green, yellow okra, raw umber, and white. You'll also need a palette for mixing and some paper towels and some masking tape. For this tutorial, just follow along. Don't worry about being exact and add your own creative twist to create your utterly fantastic art. Also, feel free to take your time. You can always pause the video or rewind to see previous steps. We're gonna start off by using some masking tape to tape off our paper. We're gonna use a ruler or any straight edge to make a line about a quarter of the way up on the paper. So before we begin applying watercolor, we're going to take a pencil and lightly sketch out the shape of the otter shown in the picture to the right. Use this picture as a reference. It doesn't need to be exact, but concentrate on the proportions. The mother's head is much larger than the cute pup's head. Sketch out some of the features on the pup's face. Start off with the nose, draw out the cheeks, draw the cute little smile on the pup's face. You'll notice that there's some changes in color here, and so we want to make sure we have some guidelines to apply the watercolor. Feel free to erase, to pause the video, and work on this sketch until you're happy to move on. When you're happy with your sketch, we can begin applying watercolor paint. Squeeze a little bit of each of the watercolors into the separate sections of the palette. We're going to start off with a wash of aquamarine. If you put too much water on the paper, don't worry, just dab it with a clean paper towel uh, to remove that paint and make it lighter. Blend the edges so that they flow nicely into the white of the paper. With the ultramarine wash still wet, Mix a little indigo with the ultramarine color on your palette and begin to apply streaks of shadows in the water. Go in a horizontal direction with brush strokes and start at the horizon and work your way down. Mix some terra verde or light green with the ultramarine color to create a turquoise-like color and apply more streaks in the horizontal direction. Now let's focus on the sky using a diluted mix of indigo. Carefully trace around the sea otters and then extend the color outward, creating an arc around the sea otters. Clean your brush in water and then use a wet brush to blend the sharp edges so that they gradually fade into the white background. Add some streaks of ultramarine to highlight areas in the sky. When you're done with the sky, pause the video and let the paper fully dry. If you want it to dry quicker, you can use a blow dryer. Now that the paper is fully dry, let's add more shadows and darker colors to the water. Create a darker mix of ultramarine and indigo on your palette by using more paint and less water. Create another darker mix of turquoise color by mixing some terra verde into the ultramarine. Use these two colors to create several horizontal strokes with little wave peaks starting at the horizon and working your way down. Make larger strokes towards the bottom of the paper and thinner strokes towards the horizon. Try not to cover all of the water with darker colors so that there is still contrast with the lighter wash underneath. You can create darker variations of these colors by adding more indigo or adding more terra verde so that there's different shades of highlights in the water.
Use a clean wet brush to remove areas of color you don't want and to create some highlights in the water. You can also use this technique to smooth out the edges of the water so that they transition smoothly into the white paper. Now let's start painting the mom's sea otter. Dilute some yellow okra with a very little raw umber to create a subtle light brown. Apply a wash to the body of the mom's sea otter. Follow the curves of the sea otter to mimic fur by using more horizontal angled strokes near the belly, angling up towards the paw, and then larger downward strokes at the base of the neck going down and curving in to blend with the horizontal strokes on the belly. Using the same technique with brush strokes, create a darker color mixture by mixing more raw umber into the color you were using and go over the body of the sea otter. Start at the base of the neck and use downward strokes to create shapes similar to upside down triangles. Space these triangles randomly by creating different size triangles with slightly different angles. As you move towards the belly, begin creating smaller triangles with points that begin to veer in a clockwise direction to the left. Using the same technique with brush strokes, we're going to add more color and detail to the otter's fur. Create a darker color by mixing more raw umber into the color you are using. Start at the base of the neck and use downward strokes to create shapes similar to upside down triangles. Space these triangles randomly by creating different size triangles with slightly different angles. As you move towards the belly, begin creating smaller triangles with points that start to veer in a clockwise direction as you follow the body up towards the paw. Dilute some Payne's Gray with a little raw umber to create a light gray-brown. Use small brush strokes to paint the mom's head, leaving some white space at the back of the neck, nose, and jaw. Create a couple darker variations of these colors, one with more Payne's Gray and another with more raw umber. Make short, random, small strokes to mimic fur that is more fuzzy than the body. Add more brown and Payne's Gray to the mix to make a darker color and use this to add highlights around the neck in small random strokes around the neck. Use larger downward strokes to blend in with your other colors. Use a light raw umber to make small downward strokes on the otter's jaw. Go over this with a darker raw umber and create downward small strokes. Highlight the top of the otter's nose with a darker Payne's gray and raw umber mix. Then create a darker mix of concentrated Payne's gray and go over the entirety of the sea otter forming highlights around the collar, around the base of the neck, blending into the body. Don't overdo it with the Payne's Gray, but it's nice having the really big contrast. Then you're going to paint a thick, uneven, dark line in concentrated Payne's Gray again to show the otter's closed eye. This should be one of the darkest colors on your paper. Now let's paint the pup. The pup is going to be more brown than the mop. Start with a diluted wash of raw umber with a little bit of yellow. Begin to shape out the paw by using a darker mix with more raw umber and a little Payne's Gray to create a shadow darker area near the mom's belly. On your palette, mix a darker color of raw umber. Use this mix to create shadows on the pup's paw and belly, left of the mom's arm. Dilute this brown and begin to go over the body of the pup using small angled brush strokes. These strokes should be smaller than those used on the mom. Go up the pup's neck and begin to shape the cheeks and top of the pup's head. Use small wispy brush strokes going outward as you circle around the pup's head. Use a darker brown by adding in more raw umber to create shadows on the pup where its mom's jaw touches. Use the same color to wrap up and begin shaping the cheeks more, adding more wispy brush strokes going outward as you circle around the pup's head. Now 
Use a light brown to shape features on the pup's face. Use a darker brown to shape out the base of the nose and draw a line for the curved mouth, blending the color downward. Use a darker brown to paint small wispy streaks in an outward direction around the pup's nose. Now use a mix of Payne's Gray to paint the actual nose. At the base of the nose, use a really dark Payne's Gray to highlight the nostrils. This should be similar color to the mom's eye. You can use the same dark color to create a couple streaks delineating the boundary between the pup's face and mom's face too. Now go in with a light brown using a diluted raw umber and yellow mix and create some highlights around the pup's face. Try to keep some of the cheek area still white. Use a dark Payne's Gray to create two eyes on the side of the pup's face. This color should be pretty dark, like the color of the mom's eye. Use the same dark color to create small little streaks on the pup's paw and across the furs, creating more contrast with shadows. If you want, use some of this dark mixture to touch up any areas or add any highlights. Now we're going to do the fur on the pup's back using a mix of raw umber. Create short wispy strokes going along the back and curving downwards as you go down. Use this darker brown to add additional shadows on your sea otter pup. Add two little shadows on the edges and corners of the pup's mouth. And now we're going to work on some of the details. Making sure your palette is clean. Use white with a little water to create a mixture that is concentrated and not too runny. Using a very fine point brush, I used a rigor size one, begin to create wispy white lines for the mom's sea otter's whiskers. Use the same white to highlight areas of the mom's face and neck. Use small, thin strokes, enhancing the fur-like texture. Add some highlights to the mom's body, concentrating more highlights on the belly and paw. Now let's add white highlights to the pup. Again, use short, thin strokes going in a similar direction as the brown paint underneath. This will help add contrast to the fur. Add wispy whiskers to the pup's face, starting at the base of the nose and going down and outward on either side of the pup's face. Make the whiskers random. Add a couple highlights to the pup's nose, shaping the top edges of the nostrils. Use white to highlight areas of the water. Use horizontal strokes of different lengths to add contrast. Add more white strokes towards the center of the water area, starting at the horizon and going down. This will give a nice reflection to the water. And finally, don't forget to sign your painting. And that's a wrap. By the way, did you know sea otters wrap themselves in kelp so they don't drift away? I hope you enjoyed this watercolor tutorial, and if you want to learn more about the ocean, please visit USC Sea Grant and any of these links below. Have a happy World Ocean Day!